Today on Resource Review, we're in a celebratory mood as we're looking at three resources to teach festivals for primary geography. They are a visit to a world cultures and anthropological museum, a series of books that feature festivals from around the world, and an online database of British festivals. Recommending today's resources, we have Rachel Bowles. Rachel is a Chartered Geographer and Chair of the Primary Committee at the Geographical Association. Joining Rachel on the panel today, we have former teacher Dave Smith, who's now ICT Consultant and Curriculum Advisor to the Havering Inspection and Advisory Service. And we also have Keith Fox, who's Head Teacher at St John's Woolworth Primary School in the London Borough of Southwark. And our resource investigator, Matthew Tosh, is out and about seeing what pupils and teachers make of our resources. Now, Rachel, today we're looking at three resources for festivals, which commonly we might think of in a religious context, but today we're thinking of them very much in their geographical context, aren't we? Yes, but festivals are very much a, a cause of celebration in everyday life, and this is what geography is all about, and the festivals help to delineate what a place is all about because they are special to a place. Okay, well let's think about your first resource which is a visit to the Horniman Museum in London. How does a visit to this particular museum work in the context of festivals? The Horniman is, is preeminent in, in this field and has a, a tremendous collection of artifacts which are masks, musical instruments, um, all sorts of toys and uh, implements that are used in connection with cultures from overseas. The museum itself runs some very good um, handling sessions and each of the handling sessions helps to demonstrate the life and the place and the geography of uh, a particular country. If you see a child, a class that's been to Horniman, it's absolutely fizzing when it comes back and, and then a lot of questions are raised that they can raise back at school and, and find the answers themselves. OK, thank you. Well, now let's go over to Matthew Tosh. And he's caught up with Stuart Fleming Primary School from South East London at the museum. I'm here at the Horniman Museum in South East London and I'm about to go and see a Year 5 group taking part in a workshop. I'm going to catch up with a teacher afterwards, but in the meantime, I don't think even their mothers would recognise these students. The very special thing about this mask is that the person who puts this on and has the whole costume on and it is in the special place becomes the spirit of the ancestors. Zoe, we've seen one of the classes from the school at the museum. What do you like about it? There wasn't anything we didn't like about the day. It was a fantastic experience for the children and it covered such a wide range of our curriculum. It was easy to organise. The museum sent out so much sort of preparation work for us to do with the children, so really helped us set up our visit. And one of our boys described it as being better than football. Now, the children were doing a mask workshop. How does this fit into teaching festivals? We've recently had an international week and we were looking at festivals from different countries, um, how festivals can teach us about a country's culture and it ties in really nicely with our artwork. So would you say there is a lot of preparation to do before the museum visit? I think you could do as much or as little as you wanted. The museum made it as easy as they possibly could. They sent out work that you could complete with the children before you went but it wasn't a case of you had to do it. It was whether you wanted to engage with those activities or not. Okay, I'm up. So how would you summarise the visit to the Horniman Museum? I would say, out of all the visits I've done as a teacher, that would be the one that I would recommend that any teacher in any class in any year group could take their children and they would have a successful day. That's worth knowing, Zoe. Thank you very much. And now I'll hand you back to Hermione. Rachel, a visit to the Horniman Museum is all very well if you can gain access to London. What if you're based a long way away? Can you access other places of a similar calibre? 
There are other museums of similar calibre. Go to 24 Hour Museum and you will find one that is uh, near to you. Dave, what do you think of this resource? I think the ability to actually get hands on with those resources that sometimes would be seen behind a glass case. It, to me is fantastic because actually taking a group of children in there into a museum, showing them about this, the culture of a particular country, whether it's Mexico, whether it's China, bringing that country to the children through those resources is really going to give them a rich experience, I think. Keith, what do you make of this museum? I've been there many times uh, in my previous life as a teacher and um, I just think it is a wonderful place. I've seen it evolve over the years from quite a fusty museum where all these wonderful things were behind glass and now the fact the children can, can get their hands on them. It is not only a wonderful resource for geography, it's just a wonderful day out for the children and if we're talking about excellence and enjoyment you've got it there. In all the, the museums, they've, if you can encourage the curators to do as Horniman has done and really make it possible to handle and come up with stories in connection with the artefacts, you're made. Brilliant. OK, well now let's move on, Rachel, to your second choice of resource for us today. And it's a series of eight textbooks, Festivals of the World, that each feature a different country. Tell us about these books and why you like them. Well, these take all the festivals not just the religious ones, and they try and show what the country is like through its festivals. So they start off with a map, they have excellent photographs, enough to get the children asking questions, why? What is that for? How did they do that? And when do they do it? And I see you've got India in your hand there. What are the countries that are covered by the series? All the countries that you immediately think of with festivals, China, Mexico, France, Spain, oh, Egypt as well. These are things that the children will have heard slightly about and they can go into depth. Thank you very much. Well, we haven't sent Matthew across the world. We've sent him to Glebe First and Middle School in Harrow to investigate this resource for us. Festivals of the World spans eight countries from Ireland to New Zealand. Now, each book pinpoints the country and then goes on to tell you about the kinds of festivals that you'll see in that country. There are also activities that children can do, and the whole book is illustrated with lots of colourful photos. Well, I'm off now to see Katie Hobson and her Year 2 class to see how they get on with the book. This nice little book tells us a lot about some of the things that the Chinese communities do on Chinese New Year. Katie, can you tell me how you've been using the book today? OK, well, we used the China book because, obviously, it's been Chinese New Year recently. Um, we used it as well with a literacy and a science link, the literacy link looking at instructional texts and how to make a kite. In it, a rat. And this year is the Chinese year of the rat. What do you like about the book? I like the, the um, I lots, lots of nice diagrams and pictures in it, which um, make it attractive to the reader. And uh, I also like the fact that at the back of the book there are sort of how to make dragon kites. So there's opportunities for um, the learners to actually go off and do some activities from the book. It's not just a fact book and information text. I would probably recommend it probably for Key Stage 2, maybe lower Key Stage 2, Years 3 and 4. But it can be adapted and parts of it could be adapted, I think, across the age range. Okay. Very good. Now we are looking at festivals today. Do you think there'll be opportunity to use the rest of the series? Oh, definitely. I mean, certainly it'd be nice to have copies of the book in our study centre that could be used for research purposes. So, your first impression of the book? I thought it was a great book and um, it could be used both by learners and teachers. But I think perhaps to find the curriculum links um, might take a little bit of time. They're not overly apparent to start off with. Thank you very much, Katie. And now we'll get back to Hermione. Keith, what did you make of this set of books, Festivals of the World? Well, as has been pointed out already, I, I particularly like the fact you've got real photographs there. You can see real people actually taking part in the festivals that the books are talking about. I was particularly interested in the, the one that's on Egypt, where uh, through various medium, we, we get the idea that um, 
a country which is a Muslim country is monocultural. And of course, in, in uh, this series, you are given the sense that there are other cultures within countries who actually celebrate their own festivals in their own way. So it's not just reinforcing stereotypes, it's, exactly. it's going against exactly. them, if you like. Very much so, yeah. Dave, what do you make of the books? I think yeah, that Keith makes a very good point there, actually, and this, similar to this uh, one on France here. And uh, it's not just uh, the Bastille Day here, but also things about the Mardi Gras and also uh, the gypsy uh, culture as well. Um, the books themselves are a good starting point as a resource. I think from the video what we're seeing is that uh, shared as a whole class, maybe it's not quite big enough, something that may be projected for a visualiser, or maybe even a big book version of this could be available. Thank you. Well, time now to move on to Rachel's third choice of resource for us today, and it's a website called projectbritain.com. Now, Rachel, what makes this website stand out from all the hundreds that are out there? Well, this is one website where if you go into a school and say, do you know about the Woodlands website? They say, oh, yes, we use it regularly. And so see, Woodlands Primary School in Kent have actually produced this product? Yes. Well, Mandy Burrows, in fact, has been the, the person who has developed it. It has a tremendous range. You can actually look at um, the uh, various customs and traditions or looking at national days and holidays. Right, OK. So it's a massive collection of all things to do with British life and culture. Yes. OK, great. Well, what did the panel think, Dave? I think it's the application here that matters because any website is only as good as the way in which you use it. So I think it's important that before the children actually have access to this, you are outlining what you expect in them to research. Otherwise, if you give them free reign on this, they could just you know, get lost yeah. in it. Yes. So it's yeah. actually focusing on specific parts. Yes. There's a lot of information in here, so I think it's about pinning that down. Yes. Okay. Keith, what do you make of it? I think um, I saw that there are 11,000 plus pages on this website. <laughs> so as you're saying, uh, Dave, to actually plough your way through all of this stuff, you know, the children do have to be very, very focused. Um, I know it's widely acclaimed. Personally, I would have liked to have got more of a feeling that the children are more involved in what is on there. Mm. But again, with 11,000 pages plus, mm. I probably have missed that bit. Mm. <laughs> um, but it is so valuable. Um, you simply click on something and it tells you how to leave your knife and fork on the plate when you've finished a meal. <laughs> well, that sort of thing, if you're in another country, is very important. So I'm sure for <laughs> some people, that's very important for them coming here. And, and it can go back to special days like Whit Sunday and Whit Monday. Um, and, and you can click on that and they, they have, Festival calendars for festivals, mm. calendars by month. So you can insert in all sorts of different yeah. ways mm. and look at it in terms of, of seasons and years. OK, well, thank you all very much. That's all we've got time for today. But to recap, the three resources that we've looked at are a visit to the Horniman Museum and participation in their workshops, Festivals of the World, published by Franklin Watts, and the ProjectBritain.com website created by Woodlands Junior School. For more information about all of the resources we featured today, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or email us resourcereview at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel today, to Rachel, to Dave, and to Keith. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs>